perfect love Have you heard of the one in heaven? Have you heard how he gave his son? Cause I have found this love I believe in the sun Show me everyone today we are going to be starting a brand new topic and we're going to learn about something called spiritual gifts now we're gonna learn more about the different types of spiritual gifts a little bit more next week but this week we're gonna focus on who gives us our spiritual gifts they are called spiritual gifts because the Holy Spirit gives them to us and that happens when we believe in Jesus because then the Holy Spirit can live in us. Listen to this. Romans 8, 11. The Spirit of the God who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you. So the God who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your bodies. He will do this because of his Spirit who lives in you. So the Holy Spirit can live in us when we believe in Jesus and he gives us spiritual gifts. Let's find out more about what the Holy Spirit does in our lives. Good morning, friends. It's Miss Sabrina here. I have a question for you. What do you notice about all of these gifts in front of me? Do they all kind of look the same? They all seem to be white. They're made of paper and they're folded over and they have some gifts inside, some things that we're gonna open together. Have you ever been able to figure out who gave you a gift just by looking at the wrapping paper? I know that when I was a little kid, I could always tell who gave me what based on the wrapping paper, like my mom or my grandma. Um, so we're gonna try to figure out ultimately what's in these gift bags. But it's important for us to learn today that the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit is what gives us all of our spiritual gifts. 1 Corinthians 12, 4, and 11. There are different kinds of gifts, but they are all given to believers by the same Spirit. All the gifts are produced by one and the same Spirit. He gives gifts to each person, just as He decides. So let's open up these gifts and find out what's inside. I'm going to start with this one. I think this one looks good. I'm going to open this up and see what's inside. Oh, it's a picture. Do you know what that is? I would say, maybe have it upside down. That's actually a megaphone. Do you know what a megaphone does? So I think I've seen people use a megaphone before. It helps you to speak loud. So if you're in a crowd of people and they're not having a hard time hearing you, like your teacher or a principal might use a megaphone to be able to speak to a lot of people. So what does a megaphone do besides speaking loud? Um, well, it gets people's attention. And the Holy Spirit is kind of like that too. It speaks up for us. It is like an advocate for us. It speaks really loud. So let's hear a verse from the book of John that speaks about the Holy Spirit. 
John 14, 16 through 17. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. John 16, 7 But very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. So when Jesus talked about the Holy Spirit, or the megaphone in our story, he described it as an Advocate, and it lives inside of us. That's one of the greatest gifts that you receive when you become a Christian. The Holy Spirit comes inside of you and acts as an advocate. Now, the, the word advocate is a really big word. So what does that mean? Well, I like to think of an advocate as somebody who helps you when you can't help yourself. So for example, if you were to get hurt on the playground and you were really hurt and you were crying and upset and you couldn't talk about it or couldn't say what happened to you, maybe a friend could be an advocate and might go and get your teacher or go and get uh, the school nurse to come and help you with whatever happened to you. So that's what an advocate is and it's kind of like the role of the Holy Spirit inside of your heart. So the book of Romans actually does a really good job of describing this concept of the Holy Spirit living inside of you. Romans eight twenty six. In the same way, the Holy Spirit helps us when we are weak. We don't know what we should pray for, but the Spirit himself prays for us. He prays through groans too deep for words. So have you ever wanted to pray but just didn't know what to say? That's been happening to me a lot lately with everything that's going on in the world with coronavirus and just things in our country right now. There's a lot going on. And we know that we can talk to God whenever we want to. But sometimes when we pray, we just don't even know what to say. And that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. The Holy Spirit acts as an advocate. It can interpret or understand what's happening inside of you, what your thoughts are, what your feelings are. And it can put it into words for a prayer so you can talk to God. So the Holy Spirit is really amazing and it's a wonderful gift that God gives us. But that's not all. Let's find out what else the Holy Spirit does. So I got my handy dandy little bag here. Let's see, let's see. Haha, -ha. John 14, 26. Let's see what that Bible verse says. Oh, it's Jesus talking. And Jesus says, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things, will remind you of everything I have said to you. That's really cool. So the Holy Spirit teaches us. So he's kind of like a teacher. Do you have a favorite teacher? Jesus said that the Holy Spirit will teach us and remind us of everything that Jesus taught. And one big way that he does that is through the Bible. Sometimes when I read through the Bible, a verse will just stick out. It'll pop out and I can't miss it. And that is the Holy Spirit making sure that I pay attention to what that verse says. See, when the Holy Spirit lives in us, he teaches us. There are more gifts. Let's see what the next one is. What does that remind you of? A stop sign. When a driver sees this sign, they need to stop. Without the sign, they might crash into another car. The Holy Spirit is similar to a stop sign. Let me show you what I mean. John 16, 8. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. This verse has some hard words in it, like convict. But basically, this verse means that the Holy Spirit tells you when to stop doing something that's bad for you or to start doing something that's good for you. Tell about a time when you felt the Holy Spirit telling you to stop doing something. So I'm going to share with you a time when the Holy Spirit convicted me of something. 
was about 10 years ago and I was shopping at Target with my son for some pads for my outdoor chairs. And I needed six pads. When I got up to the checkout and was checking them out, the lady who was working wasn't very nice. She was having a bad day. It was a little bit rude to me. And as I was walking out to the car, I thought, you know what, I think she overcharged me. And I was kind of irritated. So my son got into the car and as I was loading the pads into the car and I'm looking at the receipt, I started counting. The, and, I, and I only counted five chair pads on the receipt. So I looked in my trunk and I counted again and there were six pads. So I realized that she had made a mistake. What she, the, her mistake was that she didn't charge me the extra pad. So I had walked out of the store with something I didn't pay for. Now it wasn't my fault. I watched her ring things up. I didn't realize that it didn't ring up and I meant to pay for it. But she made a mistake and it was to my benefit. And part of me wanted to get in the car. It was really hot that day and I wanted to get in the car and I wanted to go home. But it wasn't right because it was stealing. And not only that, my son was there and my son would see me doing the wrong thing. And I knew it wasn't the right thing to do and the Holy Spirit convicted me at that moment. So we went back into Target. I found the cashier and I had to explain to her what happened. She was really surprised and her mood changed. Remember I told you she was kind of having a bad day? But here I was being honest and coming back and paying for something that I could have gotten away with and nobody would ever have known except me because the Holy Spirit told me that it was wrong and he convicted me. And so instead of doing the wrong thing, I did the right thing. We don't always know the difference between right and wrong, but the Holy Spirit does. And when the Holy Spirit lives inside of us, he will convict us. He will give us a feeling, a check in the heart, a sense that we need to be doing something different. We may not actually get a stop sign, but the Holy Spirit will convict us and will let us know that we need to be doing something different. Let's see what another gift of the Holy Spirit is. We're going to see what else happens when the Holy Spirit lives in us. Let's look in our gift. Hmm. Do you guys know anyone who wears glasses? Maybe it's you. I know for sure it's at least me. Some people who wear glasses can see a little bit without them, but some people would be walking into things without their glasses. The Holy Spirit is kind of like a pair of glasses because he guides us. In the Bible, in John chapter 16, verses 13 through 14, it says, But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. What's one thing that you know is true? Do you know that you breathe air? Do you know that if you throw a ball in the air, it comes down? Do you know that the sun rises every morning? and it sets every night, or that every spring flowers bloom, and that birds sing. There's a lot to know. God is so big, there's always more we can learn about him. And the longer we know God, the more the Holy Spirit can guide us into truth about God. In the verses I just read, it mentioned one thing the Holy Spirit will show us that actually ends up being another gift. Let's look in our gift bag. Oh, here we go. Huh. Oh, do you guys know what these are? Binoculars. Look at that. You can see so much with them. How do binoculars help you in knowing the future? Binoculars let us see farther in front of us than we could see on our own. And when the Holy Spirit lives inside of us, he can show us things about the future that we'd never know on our own. Let's see. There's so much to see. 
So that brings us to our last and final gift. What could it be? Baseball glove? Legos? Markers? And an instrument. The last thing we're learning about the Holy Spirit is this. 1 Corinthians 12, 5 through 6. There are different ways to serve, but they all come from the same Lord. There are different ways the Spirit works, but the same God is working in all these ways and in all people. When the Holy Spirit lives in us, he gives each of us a spiritual gift. A spiritual gift is something that we're good at, but it's different from a talent. The Holy Spirit can make you good at kindness, giving, or being wise. Next week, we'll learn more about what all those gifts are. But for now, the important thing to know is that they don't come from us. The final gift was in the same style of gift bag as all the other ones because every gift we learned about comes from the same source, the Holy Spirit. They may feel like they're coming from us, and that's because the Holy Spirit lives in us when we believe in Jesus, but they're special gifts he gives us to serve God. What is something you're good at, such as music, sports, drawing, building, or writing. Let's thank the Holy Spirit for these gifts. Holy Spirit, we thank you for all the gifts you give us. We thank you for being our advocate, teaching us, convicting us, guiding us, and showing us about the future and giving us spiritual gifts. Help us serve God more. In Jesus' name, amen. Where is everybody? Hmm. Why is this so empty? Doesn't look like anybody's here. Hey, Julianne, it's Jeff. I was wondering if you were coming to the church today. Yeah, Jeff. I, I'm at the church right now. Oh, because I've been walking around everywhere. I haven't seen anybody. Whoa. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh, hey! hey. How's, How's it going? going? Good? Good. Good. Uh, oh, wait. I guess we don't need this anymore. Where's, Where's Nick? Nick? Did somebody say Nick? Oh, oh hey! hey. Where have you been? I've been here the whole time. You guys almost stepped on me like eight times. Oh, sorry about that. It's all good. Um, it's kind of sad that nobody's here. I know. No one's here for VBS. Mm. What are we going to do? I don't know. Makes me sad. Yeah, it me makes too. Makes me really sad. Let's sit here and be sad. Hey, I know. What, what about? I got it. Yeah? Yeah. The answer to life? No, I just figured, would we ever not do VBS? Would we ever not do VBS? Would we ever not not? Not not not? So, what do you think we should do this year? Because the kids aren't here. Hmm. I don't have an answer for that. Science. What if we all just went home and we thought about like some demonstrations or experiments that we can do that would show things being pulled? Ooh, oh. like sermon illustrations. Yeah, kind of like that. 
-hmm. showing the strength of Jesus. Yes. And how he helps us. Yeah, and we can each come up with our own idea, and then we'll come and we'll film us teaching each other what that is, and then we can share that with all the kids. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Can I okay. use the internet? Sure. Yeah. Sorry. The internet would be just fine. <laughs> um, so. How about we go, we brainstorm, and then we meet back here tomorrow and we'll share what we came up with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we can do that. Okay. By tomorrow? By tomorrow. Oh, totally. Yeah. A full day to think of stuff? Yep. Totally. I won't wait till the last minute. No. Don't wait till the last minute. I won't. Okay. All right. Ready? Got it? Yep. Ready? Let's go. Here to spread the love of God to every